Now, this example problem can be solved using buoyant force and Archimedes principle. Here we have an oil tanker that can be modeled as a rectangular cuboid of height 5h and cross-sectional area A as shown here. Uh, now, when we put oil to it, uh, an oil volume of AH into the oil tanker, the tanker is going to sink 1.5H from the sea level. So that's shown in this figure. You can see the tanker uh, sinks 1.5H from the sea level. And since the oil volume inside the tanker is A times H, where A is the cross-sectional area, the height of that uh, oil volume must be H. Now, suddenly, uh, what happens is that uh, there's a hole in the hull of the tanker, and as a result, 50% of the oil by volume leaks into the ocean. So, 50% of this AH means 0.5 AH leaks into the ocean, and there's going to be 0.5 AH inside the tanker. So that means after leaking that 50% of oil by volume, the height of the new oil volume inside the tanker is going to be 0.5 H or half an H. So keep that in mind. That's going to be useful when we solve the problem. Okay. Uh, after that, after 50% of oil by volume leaks into the ocean, what happens is the oil tanker will take in water. So it's going to take in water. And because of that water accumulation, the tanker sink, sinks more. And we want to find at what height of that water volume in terms of H will the oil tanker completely submerge in water. So we want to express that water height the height of the water volume, the final water volume in terms of H. And we are given several information. Uh, we are given that the mass of the oil tanker without any load is M. Okay. So I'll show that here without any load, it's uppercase M. And the density of the oil is D oil, where D oil is uh, around 0.8 times the density of water. D water is the density of water. So this means the density of oil obviously is less than the density of water. As a result, the oil volume is going to float on, uh, on water. So keep that in mind. So now I'm going to draw the final situation when it's almost about to submerge, completely submerge. Uh, then the situation is going to look like this. So this is the uh, water line and the entire oil tanker is now submerged like that so it's 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 submerged and then this height that's going to be 5h okay now remember 50% of oil by volume has already leaked out of the oil tanker into the ocean so i'm going to draw that uh, oil volume on top because it's going to float on water and this height is going to be h over 2 okay so remember that so this is uh, oil so i'll write d oil for density of oil there and then this is going to be water this is going to be water and we want to find the height of this water volume so let's say that height is x, okay, and then the density of uh, water, I'll write it here, d water. And always remember that uh, the mass of the oil tanker, we have to account for that as well. That is the mass of the oil tanker without the oil and without this water, just without any, so any kind of load, uh, the oil tanker has a mass of m. So now this is the final situation. Now let's draw the free body diagram for both these cases. So the first situation is where 
you have the oil tank with a certain amount of oil so if we draw the free body diagram there uh, the downward uh, forces will be the weight of the oil tanker uh, plus the weight of the oil so i will say that's m o uh, g and then in order to balance this you can see the oil tanker uh, on this uh, left hand side that's in equilibrium so that means there's going to be an upward force uh, acting on that uh, oil tanker and this upward force is what we call the buoyant force okay usually represented by u subscript b uh, that's what we call the buoyant force okay and this is what's related to archimedes principle now uh, going to the second figure uh, that's when the entire oil tank is uh, submerged in water then if we draw the free body diagram uh, now again you're going to have this upward force ub uh, let's call it ub prime because these two uh, buoyant forces are going to be different and in the downward direction we still have the same weight for the oil tanker without any load and now we have a different uh, weight for the oil because 50% of oil by volume was leaked uh, into the water, into the ocean. So as a result, uh, we don't have the same exact oil mass as in the previous case, but now it's, uh, it's, it's half of that. Uh, so I'm gonna say like uh, MO prime times G. And now we have uh, water sea water inside the oil tanker so i'll call that m uh, w times g now let's look at case one and case two in both cases uh, before the leak and after the leak the oil tanker is in equilibrium so that means the net force acting on the oil tanker must be zero so looking at the first uh, free body diagram so this is the first uh, free body diagram I'm going to write uh, Newton's second law the net force is equal to uh, mass times acceleration but since there's no acceleration it's zero so I'll have in the upward direction the sum of all the forces in the y direction is equal to zero so that would mean we have the buoyant force in the upward direction minus mg that's the mass of the weight of the uh, oil tanker without any load and then minus uh, the weight of the oil that is inside uh, the tanker so then we get this expression and let me call that equation number one similarly we can look at the second case since again it's in equilibrium i can write all the forces should equal zero and it's the same thing along the vertical direction so sum of all the forces in the vertical direction or f y is they are equal to zero so we have uh, ub prime minus mg minus m naught prime g minus m w g equals zero now this is going to be my second equation so i have two equations and uh, my objective is to find uh, this height uh, the height of the water volume uh, that will completely submerge the oil tanker so let's go ahead and solve equation one and equation two okay now in order to find the answer let's solve these two equations so i'm going to substitute for uh, the buoyant force for the first situation uh, for the first situation the oil tanker is submerged 1.5 h below the sea level so uh, so then i need to calculate the weight of the water volume that is displaced by the oil tanker because that's how we define the buoyant force weight of the liquid volume 
that is displaced by an object. In this case, since the oil tanker is in water, we are going to look at the weight of the water volume that is displaced by the oil tanker. So we first find the volume and that is 1.5 H uh, times the cross-sectional area density of water times gravitational acceleration minus m times g. Now here the uppercase m is the mass of the oil tanker without any load. So uh, that's something that's a user defined quantity so I'm going to keep it as m. But when it comes to m naught that is the oil volume oil mass inside the oil tanker I am able to solve for that. So that according to the problem is H times A D oil times gravitational acceleration and this is equal to zero. Okay, so uh, I'll call that equation number uh, three and then U B prime. So that is the buoyant force for the second situation. Now for the second situation, the entire oil tanker is submerged. It's completely submerged. So uh, you can see now the height from the sea level or below the sea level, it's 5H. So I have 5H times A, D water times G minus MG minus, now only half of the oil volume is inside the oil tanker. Half of that oil volume is already leaked into the ocean. So I'm going to write as a result uh, 0.5 HA uh, D oil density of oil times G. And then uh, there's water coming into the oil tanker. And that's what we need to find out the height of that water volume or water column. So minus, uh, let me call that x, x times a uh, d water g equals 0. So this is equation number 4. Now the, uh, so the unknown is x, but you can see there's mg in both equations. So I can uh, basically do this. I'm going to subtract uh, equation 3 from equation 4. And then I will, I'll be able to cancel out this mg term, the mass of the oil tanker without any sort of a load. So uh, 4 minus 3, so that's going to give me uh, 5HADWG minus 1.5HADWG and the m's cancels out. And then I have uh, minus 0.5 H A uh, D oil G and then this will become plus because there's a minus and another minus so it's going to become plus H A uh, D naught or D oil G and then I have the unknown quantity the height of the water column in water volume inside the oil tanker so that's going to be uh, minus uh, x a d water g and that's equal to zero okay so here i can combine these two so i have uh, 5 minus 1.5 uh, so that is a 3.5 uh, h uh, you can see a and g cancels out so in all these terms a and g is common so they cancel out like this and then i have a d w that is for the first two terms and then for the other one i have a plus a 0.5 h uh, d oil and then i have a minus x uh, d water equal zero. Now if you recall D oil is equal to 0.8 uh, D water. So wherever I have D oil I can substitute 0.8 D water. So I'm going to do that now 3.5 H 
d water plus uh, 0.5 uh, h uh, times i have uh, 0.8 uh, d water uh, and then minus x times d water equals zero so now d water also cancels out so then i have x uh, equals uh, i have uh, 3.5 h plus uh, 0.4 h so that's the uh, that that's what i have so then finally the answer is going to be uh, 3.9 h so that's the answer the height of the uh, water volume inside the oil tanker when the oil tanker completely submerged it sinks to the bottom of the ocean the height of that water volume would be 3.9 h so here this value would be 3.9 h okay so so that's how you do this problem find, finding the water height inside the oil tanker when the oil tanker is completely submerged or sinking to the bottom of the ocean